So hi, hello, and welcome to this trailer on Go programming. Now this series is going to be, as I said, on the Go programming language. And the Go language was released by Google around 2009. It's a system programming language. Don't worry about what does system programming language mean. We'll explain all of that. Now, you don't need to have prior programming experience to learn Go, but it certainly would help. But really, you don't need it. So we can actually take up learning Go as a first time programmer. Now, if you're worried about learning to program and you actually want something else that's slightly easier than Go to program, check out my other series on web programming. That series is for people who are new to web programming, regardless of whether you know to program or not. Because I started very simply showing you HTML, which is super, super easy to program. It's one of the easiest languages to learn how to program in. So you can wet your big there and see what you think about programming. But if you're comfortable and you're brave and you're like, oh, I definitely want to learn how to program. I'm going to just jump head first in or feet first in, whatever you like. Sure, we can start here also. So. But for other people who, who know how to program, but you're just looking to pick up a new programming language, I strongly recommend Grow. And I'll explain why as we go along. But here's a little teaser. So I might go a little fast because I'm going to, this is just a teaser. So don't worry if I don't explain too much of anything because we're going to cover it in the series. So here we go. Um, I'm going to look up my directory and you're going to see I don't have anything in my directory. And I'm going to write a very simple Go program. Um, I'm do cat. And I'm say main that go. So yeah, you see, I'm even gonna use. I'm not even gonna use an editor. I say package main. I'm gonna say import uh, import fmt package, and I'm gonna say func main, and then um, fmt the package that I import print line, and say hello world, and bam and then I'll close that off and control C. All right, now if I do cat main, you can see that's my program. Uh, if I do go run main, let's see if it works and it prints hello world. Now I just cat the you know a file and wrote some stuff into it, but that's not how we're going to really be using it. We're going to use Visual Studio Editor, and don't worry, I'll go over in the video series how to install Visual Studio, how to install Go. And so um, let's zoom in a little bit here. And so the nice thing about Visual Studio Editor is that you can configure to do some formatting for you as you type. And don't worry about that, I'll explain all that. But some of the things I like about Go is how easily I can open a file. So let's say, for example, I have a file called data.txt and I want to read some content out of it. So hello from my very simple text. To text file, and I'm gonna go back here and let's see how to open it. Well, something like opening a file vary from operating system to operating system, but Go, Go makes it very easy. So I'm gonna use the OS package. So let's go using the FMT package to um, print stuff to the screen. I'm using the OF package to open a file because it makes sense that um, that should be how to open a file um, should be something that's OS specific, and Go hides that away in the OS package that it implements for each operating system. So I want to open the file called data.txt. And if I put my mouse over here, you can see it says it accepts a name, the name of the file to open called string and then returns two parameters. It pointed to a file and an error. So yeah, so already you see that Go can return multiple um, arguments, um, per, uh, multiple results in a function call or a method call. So um, I need to store those somewhere. So I have var, f is the file, pointed to the file and the error. So that's fine. The other thing you notice is as I was typing here, um, my editor was automatically doing this import for me. So that's a nice little feature that kind of Go has, and I'll explain all of that, and how your IDE make use of it. And so now that I have the file import, I'm seeing this red squiggly in time, it's telling me something is wrong. Again, I'm not gonna explain too much, but basically I wanna check and see if there's an error. And if the error is not equals to nil, then um, I want to log um, that's all you know. I couldn't open this file and this was the error. So, because there's no point in going on, so I do a log fatal, so that kills my program. If I can open the file, um, I do want to copy the contents of the file out to the standard input. So, um, I'm going to do io.copy. Um, so, the io package um, has some methods to do things like copying and other things. So, um, I want to copy from one place to another. So, 
if I put my mouse over it, it tells me that, oh, the destination is a writer, something that implements the writer interface, and the source is something that implements the reader interface. And of course, it returns two values there, which is how many bytes were written and if there was an error doing so. So I don't care about the error, so I'm, I'm going to ignore that. But where do I want to write to? I want to write to the screen or standard out. So that's an OS-specific thing, STD out. And so STD out looks like a writer, and it implements the writer interface. And a file, of course, you know, implements the reader interface. And we could, we're going to talk more about interfaces and stuff. And so you can see, with basically two lines, I have opened a file and read the contents. But to help clean up my resources, um, one of the things I have to do is close the file when I'm finished with it. So come on. So I'll close the file. So three lines. So open the file, copy the stuff from the file to the output, and then close it. And let's run this and see. So go run. And you can see the contents of my file, right? All right. So that's super easy to do in Go. And very few other languages, maybe except C and C++, would make it this easy. But there are a number of other things that Go provides you that it makes this even better than C and C++. All right. So one of the other things that Go does really nicely is this thing. It has this thing called defor. And I really don't know of any other language that has it. And so I'm going to say defor. I'm going to move up here because once I reach this line, 16 or anything past here, once there's no error, I know that I have to close this file. Why? Because since there wasn't any error opening it, I know that I definitely want to close it when I'm finished. And so if I defer the close, which means tell go, I want you to call f that close when you return from this function main, regardless of how I get out of this function main. So now I'm free to go ahead and use f and exit main by any number of possible paths, and I don't have to worry about the file being closed. And we're going to see more about this sort of thing um, when we go along in the language, how this could read to memory, leak in other languages, and how go make it very easy to think. So my program still works the exact same way. And so run, and it works the fine. But what is this defor really doing? So let's play with defor a little bit. So I could say defor fmt that print line and I'm going to say hello and then I'm going to do a few more lines I'm going to say world I'm going to put comma here just so the hell I'm just making doing silly stuff and I'll say done and so um, of course I don't want this file open anymore and so here what I'm saying is um, defer print a note of this then this then this or this and notice the order I did. I defer hello first, then world, then comma, then done. Now, when we run it, you're going to see what's going to happen. It actually prints it out in the reverse order, which makes sense. Um, think of it this way. If I allocate a piece of res a resource here, hello, and then I allocate a resource here, world, that also uses hello, and I defer releasing of these resources in the order I allocated them, it makes sense then that it should be deallocated in the reverse order, right? That I should deallocate the last one I, I allocated first and going backwards. And hence, that's why you see that these default statements were run in the reverse order. And so this is just one example of something that's pretty cool in Go. And again, I'm just doing a taste of the language without explaining a whole lot. But there are a number of other cool things in Go that are just really, really too nice to you know, um, to really cover in just this teaser video. I mean, I can really keep going here, honestly, but I just want to whet your appetite a little bit and pique your interest about this series, and then hopefully you'll join me on learning this very, very, very wonderful language. All right? All right. I look forward to seeing you in future videos. Take care, and come back and check out the first video in which I'm going to cover how to install the tools we need to program in Go. All right. See you. Take care. Bye.